Every single version of the RTX 50 series is faulty. AMD is not making their own RX 9000 series cards, and we've got insane benchmarks to talk about for the 9070 XT. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, February 25th, 2025. Gonna start off by reminding you that we do have our PC giveaway that's gonna be drawn on Friday, February 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern. It's for the RTX 5090 9800 X3D PC. We'd love for you to come join us over on our Twitch stream for that. You can come check out twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech to find out how to enter into it. And then after that one's drawn, we will then be announcing our next giveaway, which will likely be a very similar 9800 X3D 5090 PC. But I'm gonna have to check every single GPU I'm putting into these PCs because it turns out that the RTX 50 series is missing some ROPs, also known as a render output unit. This was being discovered all across the internet on Friday and over the weekend, with many people noticing that their RTX 5090 was missing eight ROPs, which is not that much in the terms of the 5090, but it did cause some performance loss of roughly 5%. Initially, it was on a Manly card, I believe, and then it was found that it was on a Gigabyte card, and then it was found that it was on Founders Editions, and it just kept coming out that a bunch of these cards are having these issues. And when you test it, yes, these cards are indeed slower than the full ROP unit 5090. But then it wasn't just the 5090. It was also discovered that it was the 5090D. And it didn't matter which GPU manufacturer it was, it appears that it was a defect coming from NVIDIA with their GPU dies. At which point NVIDIA came out before anybody had tested otherwise and said that they've identified a rare issue affecting less than half a percent of 5090, 5090D and 5070 Ti owners having fewer ROPs than specified. The average graphical performance impact is 4%, allegedly. With the RTX 5090, it's 4%, but when you test the RTX 5070 Ti, it's actually closer to 10%, because missing those eight render output units is actually closer to 10% fewer units. So NVIDIA stated, yeah, uh, we accidentally shipped faulty RTX 5090 and 5070 Ti's, which is curious, because according to everything I read, this is something that would have been found out if they were doing uh, proper quality assurance. I'm not entirely sure if that's the case. Maybe that's just uh, people opining on the internet, but it does feel like it's a it's a hardware bug that should have been caught later on down the line. And the fact that they were immediately able to come out and say that it was half a percent of these cards and that it's affecting very few people seems that they know where it's coming from. But then we found out that they don't because the RTX 5080 is also missing ROPs. That was discovered the 5090, 5070 Ti and 5080 all having eight fewer ROPs than they're supposed to. With the 5080, some synthetic benchmarks so that it's about a 10 to 12% performance hit. So NVIDIA is saying it's defective silicon in half a percent of two different versions of the GPUs. We found out that it's actually applying to a third GPU. If you have one of them, you just check on GPU Z, how many ROPs is it supposed to have versus what is actually there. With the 5070 Ti, you're supposed to have 96 ROPs. With the 5090, you're supposed to have 176. So just verify if you get your hands on an RTX 50 series that it's actually the GPU that it's supposed to be. But this is just appearing to be a massive problem for NVIDIA. It's just day after day after day, we're continuing to find more and more issues with these RTX 50 series. And this one is one of the more egregious ones of the actual GPU itself. Power connector is technically a different thing than having defective dies that are going out to people and then also not fully disclosing that you know how this is happening. So we'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully NVIDIA just fully RMAs anybody who has the missing ROPs and that they just completely swap it out with no issues getting that taken care of immediately, but it's not a good look for an already struggling class of GPUs. And there were reports behind the scenes that uh, the 5070 and the 5060 Ti are having some performance issues and that they might be delayed. I don't know if that's to be believed because there's a lot of uh, negativity bias surrounding NVIDIA right now, but who knows if the 5070 is also going to suffer from these diminished GPU cores as well. I don't know. We'll keep you posted as we know more. But in case you have a 50 series that you need to take out of your PC, you could swap it out with today's video sponsor, Silverstone, and their ECM40, which is a PCI Express 4.0 by 16 to four by M.2 NVMe SSD expansion cards designed for users looking to expand their storage capacity by adding up to four M.2 NVMe SSDs via that PCI Express slot. The ECM40 supports four of those SSDs in the various form factors, including 2230, 2242, 
2260 and the beloved 2280. And since high performance M.2 SSDs can generate significant heat during operation, which may lead to thermal throttling and data loss, the ECM40 features a 40 millimeter dual ball bearing cooling fan with an on off switch to help maintain optimal operating temperatures, no matter the use case. For users seeking top speed performance or looking to expand storage with the M.2 SSDs in their PC systems, the ECM40 is an excellent choice, whether it's going in your GPU spot or you're adding it supplementary. So you can grab a Silverstone ECM40 for yourself today via the link in the description below and add some serious expansion potential to your PC storage. Thanks as always to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. But while Silverstone wants you to invest in your PC storage, it looks like Apple wants to invest into the US economy with them committing their largest amount ever to the US over the next four years. They're saying that they're planning on spending $500 billion to a wide range of initiatives, including chip manufacturing, research and development, worker training, about 20,000 jobs over that four year span, as well as building a 250,000 square foot server manufacturing facility in Houston. And they're planning to double their US advanced manufacturing fund. That makes it so that advanced manufacturing and skills development happens here in the United States. Obviously, there's probably some political motivation behind all of this, but it's also just a commitment of Apple to continue to invest in workers here domestically where they're from, but then also potentially uh, come out with better products in the future, maybe. But maybe Reese can save us $500 billion somehow with UFD deals. It'd be cool if that happened. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And hey, let's jump straight into the deals today with this Yeston Sucker YT120. With these ARGB case fans available in a three pack for only $34.90, making it $25 off. But then next up, we have the Logitech G Pro Wireless Gaming Mouse going for a very nice price of $69.49, making it $60.50 off. And then lastly today, we have this Acer Predator 27 inch 1440p 240 it's OLED gaming monitor, which you can pick up for only $499.99, making it $400 off. I love seeing OLED prices come down because I really want one. It's my next big upgrade and they are stupid expensive in South Africa still. So I'm hoping we see prices go down too. Keep your fingers crossed for me, please, please. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, here's the deal when it comes to SMS two-factor authentication. It's not very safe, which is why Google is killing it when it comes to Gmail. You're no longer gonna be able to use SMS verification for Gmail because it's just so vulnerable compared to other versions of two-factor authentication. SIM swaps, phone number hijacking can all make it susceptible so that you actually lose out on that added security that two-factor is supposed to bring you. So instead, you're gonna be presented with a QR code that you scan with your phone so you still have the phone element, but it's going to be slightly more secure, making it so that people that are trying to access your account that aren't supposed to be in there can't get in there. And AMD can't give us the goods. They're not making their own RX 9000 series GPUs. This is at least allegedly what they're trying to say to us because people were expecting a reference edition of the RX 9070 XT thanks to some of these images that we've seen on their promotional material. This GPU looks beautiful. I would love to display this in my PC. However, in the last few days, AMD has gone to disclose that these are actually artistic renders not available for purchase, which means that the made by AMD models likely will not be happening for the RX 9070 and 9070 XT. So no reference models, no founders editions, whatever you wanna call it. AMD looks like they're gonna be only using third-party manufacturing or this is not the design and there is a different design and this is a bait and switch and we just have to wait till February 28th this Friday to find out what exactly it's gonna be because that's when they're gonna be unveiled all of the stuff about the new generation of GPUs, except for their slides have already been leaked. And we have some details of what AMD is expecting to talk to us about this coming Friday, and that is the 9070 XT, when you compare it to the 7900 GRE, is wicked fast. So we don't have it compared to very many AMD GPUs, and we don't have it compared to any Nvidia GPUs at the current moment, but according to the slides that we're expecting AMD to show off, the 9070 XT at 1440p Ultra is gonna be 38% faster than the 7900 GRE. At 4K Ultra, it's gonna be 42% faster, and then comparing it to the 6900 XT at 4K 
max settings, very weird that they changed it there, uh, it's a 51% increase. And then when you go down to the non-XT 9070 versus the 7900GRE, 1440p Ultra, 9070 beats it by 20%, 4K Ultra, 21%, and then versus the 6800XT, again, max settings, not Ultra, it's 38%. And that's the average across 30 different games with, you can see all of the various games being tested between all of these GPUs, 9070XT versus the 7900GRE and the percentage win that the RX 9000 series is expected to have. Now, this seems good. Hopefully, that means that they're aiming for the 7900GRE price point, which I will remind you is $549, the exact same price that we're expecting the RTX 5070 to drop in at. Now, if it does beat the 7900GRE by this much, we're expecting that the 5070 should get trounced on by the 9070XT. This is actually an incredible showing if AMD can be trusted with all of these benchmarks and it's not just them stacking the deck. One for one, dollar for dollar, 9070XT versus a 5070 at the same price. Looks like the 9070XT is gonna take home the win, except for we have a Geekbench 6 result showing that the 5070 is faster, at least in this one synthetic benchmark. Now, obviously this doesn't mean anything in terms of gaming, but it is just curious that uh, there, there are oddities happening here where it appears that a reviewer got their hands on the 9070XT 5070 at the same time. They upload both scores and it looks like the 5070 is just ever so slightly faster than the 9070XT. Again, don't take that for meaning a whole lot. Benchmarks are likely to be provided with more context by AMD this coming Friday. And then we're expecting the reviews on the 5070 and the 9000 series to come out next week prior to the sales that are happening next week. Again, just as a reminder, just be kind to your friendly tech reviewer, okay? They're going through a lot right now. They've had so much content to deal with, so many different cards coming in, so many companies wanting their videos to go out when the embargo lifts. And it's just, it's gonna be a stressful time to trying to get all of these G GPUs benchmarked and uh, get accurate data out there. So be kind to them. Just tell them you appreciate them. Let them know that you uh, you love their good work. Shout out to Hardware Unbox. I know you guys always work very hard when it comes to this type of stuff. So just hopefully you get a little bit of rest in uh, late March, maybe maybe April. Just hope things go well for you and you guys. Uh, did well in the comments on Friday's episode, Thursday's episode of Hot News, excuse me. We got the last Dacian saying physics getting removed is a d move. Honestly, they first inject proprietary software in games, which AMD didn't have the license to do hardware acceleration on, and now they remove backwards compatibility support. Truly, NVIDIA is a garbage business. I mean, to be fair, they did not remove physics support. Physics 64-bit is still supported. It is just 32-bit CUDA support that has been deprecated, so thereby physics has also been deprecated. It's not just a matter of uh, them removing physics. Physics still works in 64-bit physics games. However, by the time 64-bit games were being made, most people didn't have a dedicated physics setup where that was necessary. It just kind of got rolled all into one. You didn't need an accelerator for it. And in reality, let's just be honest, this affects so few games that uh, I can understand why they don't want to put in the development effort in order to continue to have legacy support for uh, uh, something that is it's just not relevant to the vast majority of people. How long do they have to keep supporting technologies and products? And like, not everything in the PC space has always been this uh, long term, right? Like the, the longevity of what we have right now is an exception in the decades of PC history where things went obsolete really, really quickly. And we're not having that happen so much anymore. So when it does happen, people are losing their minds. And then we got DQ Scat saying, budget GPU are dead. APU and $2,000 plus laptop came to comment this. You beat me to it. I, I addressed this in the video. This is like, a, I knew people were gonna comment this. And the, the whole point is that it's not the price point of the device that's killing budget GPUs. It's the fact that the, the price point gives AMD and Asus a lot more profit margin for the exact same performance, but it's the scaling down of that technology that will inevitably lead to the price points coming down. It's the, uh, the, the whole APU going into gaming handhelds, just the integrated GPUs that are being included on APUs are so gosh dang good that it makes it 
just kind of irrelevant to have budget GPUs at that one to $200 price point. Because even looking at things like the Battle Mage graphics and Intel's laptops, those are doing way better than they've ever done before. Battle Mage is making it so that uh, low end discrete GPUs are just being replaced by integrated graphics by Intel. And then Nvidia is expected to come out with, I think it's called the NX1 laptop later on this year. That's gonna be a very similar situation. The integrated GPUs that are going into uh, different things. Yes, the Strix Halo is the Halo product, so it's gonna be the most expensive. But when you start scaling down, going from 40 compute units down to something like 12 to 20, we're gonna start seeing more reasonably priced products that just kind of eliminate that market segment as far as I'm aware, which has already been happening. It's not like it's not like I'm saying something and I'm predicting the future. I'm saying something because that market segment's already been dissolved. Like it, none of these companies are selling GPUs under 200 bucks besides like a, a GTX 1030 or a GT 710, which have been around for ages. And then OG Benchmark saying, I love the appreciation for nine to five schedule. It's hard to do these days and it's easy to let work creep into every corner, keep it up. I mean, this is something that I've really tried to establish from the very beginning of what we've done here at UFT Tech. I mean, when I started the channel, which, oh, forgot to mention, today's the 10 year anniversary of UFT Tech, by the way. The uh, first video got uploaded 10 years ago today. But anyways, when that happened, I had two kids already. My work and my life uh, were already kind of balanced at that point. And so uh, with YouTube eventually becoming my work, it's just continuation of like, no, I need to take care of my family first. This channel got popular when we had our third son. Um, and now, you know, we have four kids. And so like what I've realized over the decade that I've, I've been doing this is that there's always more work to do. There's always something else. And uh, people want to impose their deadlines on you. They want to tell you, hey, get my video done on this now. Do it because I told you to. But it's never that important. It's, ne it's never that big of a deal. We're talking about things that play video games, okay? You can wait an extra day, all right? I'm gonna go spend time with my family. That's my idea. And then Domic Domic saying, no Wednesday episode, no Friday episode. I'm worried. Um, no, <laughs> there's nothing to be worried about. Uh, there was no Wednesday episode just because there was limited news and uh, two of the employees here and me went out to a concert that night. So I just kind of pushed it off. Friday, um, very similar thing. We had other priorities when it came to the business instead of doing hot news. It's just, uh, we were also down an editor. So like things just couldn't, it's, Things, things were, we got moving machinations behind the scenes that make it slightly tricky to always kind of keep a schedule, but that's okay. It doesn't need to happen. You can miss a day. It's totally fine. This is a, this is a philosophy I'm trying to uh, make sure I abide by. I can put other things in front of the content that we're trying to do. I will be consistent. You're gonna get most, most of 2025 is gonna have regular hot news, but occasionally it just won't be that way. And we're gonna start peppering in uh, more content in addition to what we have now. And I'm gonna pepper out. Salt, you later.